Hey everybody, um, what you're going to see right now is a clip of a bigger video on simplifying rational expressions. In this clip, what you're going to get are three examples that are going to be kind of straight down the middle, run-of-the-mill rational expressions that are going to require simplifying. These ones will be good representations of some straightforward simplifying. I hope they help. Good luck. So, whether you want to work on this in bits or whether you want to pause it now, copy down all three, doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to work through these next three expressions. So what I would like you to do, though, is I want you to give them a shot yourself on each one of them. So once we've copied down G, I want you to pause the video and I want you to give it a shot on your own. Let's go start to finish and we'll see if we match up in the end. Okay, pause it now. Okay, we're back. So hopefully we looked and we said, I don't have a common factor in all my terms. But if I factor the bottom, I notice that that's a difference of squares. And so it's going to factor into conjugates. There's my x plus 5 times my x minus 5. And now that I look at that, I have a common factor I can divide out. Please don't be alarmed with the top and go, but wait a second, the top's two terms. Yes, I would agree it's two terms. But it could also be viewed as one term if you wanted to think about like common factoring out of one. So I want you to notice that if we find the entire factor, even though it doesn't look like it's factored, we can always divide that out. So you're not going to see me factor out a one we should be good to just say, I have an x plus 5 on top and an x plus 5 on the bottom. And when I divide out those x plus 5s, I'm left with a 1 on top and my x minus 5. Hopefully we match up. And I'm really hoping that no one forgot about the restrictions. Now, you might be a little cocky sitting at your desk going, I didn't forget about my restrictions. I notice that if x equals 5 then my denominator is going to equal zero and that's undefined and I can't have that. And I would say good. You're not entirely correct though. So I'm going to uncircle that and I want you to listen to my wording that I used earlier. The best place to look for your restrictions is your first factored form. Because you notice that if you look at your final expression, yes, you found the restriction that x can't equal 5, but look at your factor that divided out. Notice our x plus 5 divided out. That doesn't mean that it's gone. I need to ensure that this expression has the same value as this expression, which has the same value as this expression. That's what equals means. And so we should notice that if you were to sub in an x equals negative 5, then those two lines that have stars beside them would both be undefined. So even though we could sub that into our final line, we're still not going to be equal. So I need to amend my restriction. It's not just x equals 5. It's actually x equals plus or minus 5. Both would be restrictions. Okay, hopefully we matched up on that. We're doing pretty well. I'm going to just put a little wavy line down the middle to keep H a little separate. And I think you could jump in and play around with H. So I want you to pause the video now. We'll see if we match up. Okay, we're back. I'm going to do my solution in red this time just to kind of let it pop out a little bit compared to the previous one. Now, some of you guys might have been spending time in the last year or two and you're hearing from your teacher how you really want to be able to fast factor. That fast factoring or factoring is going to become a small part of a lot of problems we do. So that's why we want to be really quick with it. Hopefully you can start to see today how factoring becomes a fundamental skill for us, not just in solving polynomial equations, quadratic equations, but now in also reducing fractions. So when I take a look at my top, 
I'm going to go through the process and say, okay, two numbers are multiplied to give two, two numbers are multiplied to give six. They need to come together to give me a minus one in the middle. They can if that minus four and a positive three. So now I can factor that and I can put in my variables in my brackets. On the denominator, I can factor out a common factor of two. Now I see that my 2x plus 3s are common factors, so they can divide out, and I would be left with x minus 2 over 2. Okay, if we walked away from the problem now, I would be concerned if I were you, that we're not putting enough focus into our restrictions. If you said, but there are no restrictions, because I just have a 2 on the bottom, then I would be very concerned because we're not given that enough detail. We look back at our first factored form, and I notice that this bracket can give me my restriction. So in my mind, I'm setting that bracket equal to zero, and I am solving. Just like with quadratic equations, most of us don't write that stuff down. We can see getting rid of the three and dividing out the two, and so we can tack on that restriction that x can't equal negative 3 halves. Now we have a correct statement. Okay, I'd like to go through this problem a different way. That what we just did is going to be very common for a lot of you. But if you really want to get good at this, not just in grade 11... But if you're trying to lay the groundwork for advanced functions, then there's maybe a different perspective to take, just a different way to think about it. I want you to take a look back up at H. And then I want you to look back up at question B. That question that I threw up there where I said 455 over 12 and I wanted you to reduce it, this is the other reason why I wanted to talk about a problem like this. That for some of us, fast factoring still is not that fast. Just the same way as if you're trying to look at a top and bottom of a fraction and say, hey, does a 7 go in there? Does an 11 go in there? Does a 4 go in there? Maybe our mental math isn't that great. Well, calculators have been able to help you out with the first fraction. Calculators aren't going to help you out that much with H. So can we have another strategy? I want you to notice I'm going to deal with H differently. I'm going to look at the bottom because the bottom is simpler. And I notice that on that bottom, I can pull out a common factor of 2. That leaves me with a 2x plus 3. I want you to think about that 455 over 12 fraction. Remember, the only thing that we had to check into 455 was 2 or 3. We didn't care about any other numbers. So it's the same thing here. All I care about, is there a 2 in my top, or is there a 2x plus 3 in the top? I don't care if the top factors into anything else. If it does not contain a 2 or a 2x plus 3, it won't reduce. So clearly we should be able to look up to the top and realize there is not a 2 in there because we see that there is not a common factor of 2. However, you might notice that if all I'm looking for is a 2x plus 3, then this can speed up my fast factoring. I'm not going to really fast factor the same way. I'm not going to go two numbers will multiply to give two, two numbers will multiply to give six, and maybe go two and three, there's a six and a two, doesn't work, flip it. I'm not going to do that because I have a goal in mind now that I want within my fast factoring chart there to be a two and a plus three. Because that would come together to give me a 2x plus 3 factor. Now, I don't know if that factor's in there, but that's the only thing I'm going to check for. So, 
if I have that two, then when I come back and I say two numbers that multiply to give two, then I know that it has to be two and one. I look back and I now say two numbers that multiply to give six, specifically negative six. Well, since I've already dictated that the only one I care about is a positive three, then that makes my other value have to be a negative two. Now I do a quick check in the middle. Yep, those match up. So it is going to factor into what I find useful. As I said, if that didn't work, then I know it's fully reduced. I don't care how it factors. So if we're working through the process of fast factoring, and fast factoring is still taking us 20, 30 seconds, maybe longer when the numbers get a little larger, then I'm going to recommend to you focus in on the easier factors. Think about your 455 over 12. That's going to help us out. So we clearly get to the same thing. Like if a fraction reduces, it doesn't matter how we reduce it. And then we just had to remember, tack on a restriction. So just something else to consider. Okay, you take a look at I. Well, now I maybe causes a little bit of a problem because both of them are complex trinomials. We have a little more factoring to do. Okay, I want you to pause the video. Go ahead and factor I. Okay, we're back. So hopefully we factored and we simplified. I'm going to jump back to blue again just so we can tell them all apart. Maybe I look at the top and I just generically go through and factor. And I go, okay, two numbers to multiply to give two. Two numbers to multiply to give 15. That gets me a positive six and a negative five. That can get me to my plus one. So I factor the top into a 2x minus five times an x plus three. Now, if I'm really getting good at this, I'm not just going to blindly factor the bottom. You can totally blindly factor the bottom. It's okay. However, I should be able to tell pretty quickly there is no x plus 3 factor that could be in there because 3 isn't a factor of 5. So the only factor I'm really checking for is a 2x minus 5. So I'm going to put 2 and minus 5 in my fast factoring chart. That means that my two numbers that multiply to give 2 had to be 2 and 1. And my two numbers that multiply to give positive 5 had to be negative 5 and negative 1. I'm going to do a quick check. Does that give me a negative 7? It does. Beautiful. Now I notice that I can divide out my common factors. And I am left with an x plus 3 on top and an x minus 1 on the bottom. And we should have been automatic to say that x cannot equal 5 halves from the factor that divided out or 1 from the factor that remained. There we go. So I would argue that if you were to work your way through I, I think I is a middle-of-the-road reducing fraction. Okay, I want to jump into a few more problems as we go.